Searching the Northwest to bring you the biggest variety in sports. Northwest Television Sports brings you the rejoicing of victory, the frustration of defeat, the drama of competition. This is Northwest Sports. Dallas, Oregon, as we get ready for the Highlanders and the Dragons coming up. First possession for the Highlanders. I am Matthew Palumbo. I am joined alongside by Michael Brown making his maiden voyage on the airwaves tonight to talk about football as we get prepared for Western Oregon. But we have action at hand between two teams here in the Willamette Valley and the Dallas Dragons. And the North, Eugene Highlanders. The Highlanders come out 0-1, sporting the white on red ensemble. And, of course, you cannot miss the Dallas Dragons in their orange and black. Mike, thank you for joining us tonight. For sure, Matt. Just have some fun, enjoy yourself, and just uh, do what you do. You watch football, first play underway. It's going to be a handoff. And good yardage picked up on first down. Four or five yards, good offensive line push there, Michael. Yeah, off the left side, uh, just a uh, good seal block. Was able to make it to the outside for, for a short game there. Picking it up, that'll bring the ball out to roughly just past the 20-yard line. Should bring up second down and five for North Eugene. Underneath center tonight, getting a read on the numbers. It is not Alex Tucker, actually, because that's a storyline as it's a loss of play on the – Second play from Skimmage. Alex Tucker actually hurt himself a week ago in their opening game, their opening loss, a 41-18 to loss at Corvallis. It is a kidney injury that we were informed about. Luke Arbogast is going to be the starting quarterback, and he is wearing the number 18 in honor of his teammate who is injured tonight. It is third down and six, ball on the 19-yard line. Highlanders will have to take it out past the 25-yard line to pick up a first down. Dragons showing a little bit of pressure on the outside. And the first pass is picked up, a shoestring catch. And the first down yardage is picked up very nicely by Jackie Murphy, tight end. He is a senior, five foot eight, 155 pounds. Mike, how did you see that throwing alley open up there? It was just a really quick pass and uh, he caught the ball. Had to, had to reach down for it, but it was a great catch. Moving the chains here on the opening drive, North Eugene. Operating right around the 30-yard line. 11-yard pickup there on third down. One for one on third down conversions are the Highlanders. Late summer night here. Muggy weather, but great football weather. And now a little bit of in-around sweep. And read well by the Dragon defense as Cody Pruitt had nowhere to go on that play. Stuffed him at the line right there. That was a good job. Staying home and containing a big part of being a defensive end, right, Michael? I mean, your job really is to make sure to contain. Always, especially when you see somebody coming in motion, you want to always be aware of that. Number 21 in the backfield along with Luke Arbogast. Tristan Carnes. It's going to be a pass, good protection, but defensive line suffocating and coming through for the sack on the Dragons defensive line, number 74, Justin Ingram. Supposed to be a quick pass, but there was no one open. It made it an easy sack on that play. It's gonna bring up third and long again, a second time on this opening drive for the Highlanders. Ball placed on the 27 yard line. North Eugene will have to take this ball outside the 40 yard line to pick up the needed yardage for first down. Pass out into the flat. Read well again by this Dragon defense, which looks very disciplined. It'll bring up fourth down, and we can expect the special teams unit and the punter to come out. Looks like they were trying to have the receiver make a play on that one with a short pass. One of my favorite terms, giving a person, you know, a, a ball that can catch in area, give them a chance to see if they can maneuver, run, and pick up the yardage they need on their own. Penalty flag, our first yellow flag of the season. Looks like it's either going to be a delay of game or possibly too many men on the field. Illegal substitution, ah, legal 12 substitution. men on the field. 
on the offense. Five yard penalty, fourth down. I did notice coming in late on that play was number 34. Couldn't pick up exactly who it was, but I have a feeling somebody missed their assignment. They'll back it up five yards further and give Dallas an opportunity to get great field position on their opening possession. Speaking of the game, they were trying to see if they could sneak an extra player out there. but <laughs> It's 11 on 11 as far as the rules state, Michael. You can't have it 12 on 11. Good pressure coming. Not a very good kick end over end. Ball is actually around, gosh, the Highlanders 48 yard line. So Dallas will start their first possession, Michael, in North Eugene territory, have half a field to operate, and they will start with Jarrett Stewart, quarterback, senior, six foot four, 210 pounds, your prototypical quarterback in the backfield. Not knowing much about these teams, we know that Dallas a week ago, 47 to 30 victors over Park Rose. Stewart will give a handoff and big hole, gaping hole on the right side. And Evan Courtney had plenty of room to run and it will be first down and 10. Great opening play, great script there, Michael Brown. Great, yeah, they've been practicing this all week probably, and uh, a counter that gets them a first down right off the bat. It's a good way to start the night. Michael picking up there on that replay. Nice counter block that picks up the first down yardage. They're gonna run on the left side. We're gonna see it, uh, if it works on student body right. It might work on student body left. Pile moving everything forward. And the Dragons come out with two very positive running plays. The offensive line is ready to play right at the beginning of the night. Most games, obviously, won just right inside the trenches. I mean, if you can take control of the ball on the ground and you can stop the other team from running, it's an effective way to win a lot of football games. First pass of the game, flushed out of the pocket and an open man with room to run. And the Dragons moving the ball at well. Jarrett Stewart gets out of the pocket. Looks like he hits Devin Floyd out in the flat. And big yards picked up and another first down as, honestly, Mike, it looks like they've already entered the red zone on just three plays. Floyd was open in the flat. He hit him. First down resulted. Been able to run the ball right, been able to run the ball left, and been able to pass the ball. Well, they're back. Running the ball once again, and now on the end, going all the way into the end zone from the 18-yard line, number 34, Bryson Grillo, running back. Senior, five foot, 865 pounds, takes it into the end zone. Dragon stop. You see, he the comes board. around, 58 seals the block right there, and it's off to the race. There's just one man to beat, and he's able to hit him right at the goal line, score the touchdown. Looks like Chris Rubio, number 58, Chris, Michael picks up. Chris Rubio with a great lead block there. Only takes four plays to go about 48 yards as this Dallas Dragon offense looks like it may be vaunted tonight. Place kicker right now will be 14, Jacob McDonald. It's a good snap, it's clean. And the Dragons on top for seven to nothing here in first quarter action on Valley TV, channel 17. A pooch kick, but North Eugene takes full advantage of that small kick from McDonald. And it is Cody Pruitt taking the ball out past the 35 yard line, giving decent field position to North Eugene on their second possession. They get into two third and long situations on their first possession, pump the ball away and the Dallas Dragons on four plays, march at 48 yards. And it gives us our score of seven to nothing and the momentum squarely on the home team's side tonight. They are playing on natural grass and are playing very much to get a full artificial turf and new track here at this stadium. And right now the defensive line of the Dallas Dragons looks to be overmatching the offensive line of North Eugene. Stuff him right up front. The running back has nowhere to go right now. 
short gain on the play. It'll move the ball out to the 37 yard line. It'll bring up second and eight. Quick first quarter, six and a half remaining here from Dallas, Oregon. A little bit of confusion coming from the sideline right now. Alex Tucker, not excuse me, it's Luke Arbogast having a little trouble with the play call. He's looking to keep it, he'll pitch it to the outside. And again, Dallas keeping the man in front, but it looks like Tristan Carnes will pick up the yardage and give North Eugene its first, first down as they move closer to midfield. They're running the option right there, they were able to get to the outside. No one stopped the quarterback, he was able to pitch it. First down. Man in motion, bad snap. And the quarterback has nowhere to go. Crowd comes alive and TJ Dimmick. Number 45, senior, six foot two, 230 pounds, barreling down on the quarterback. Quarterback had nowhere to go on this. Everybody's coming to get him. And then Dimmick there to finish up the play. Strange that our best friend actually has the last name of Dimmick making the play, but no relation that we know of. It'll be third down and four. Trips wide receivers to the tall side of the screen. Timeout going to be called by North Eugene as they want to make sure they get the play call right. Stay tuned for more action on Valley TV, Channel 17. Seems to be a lot of communication problems right now with the backup quarterback in there. It's third and long, third and 13. Pass goes up. It's underneath, not giving the receiver much room to run. Jockey Murphy picks up his second reception of the game, but it will be quite short of first down yardage. And I would expect that we would see North Eugene want to punt the ball away again. But they're saying third down if I look across the way. I guess it was a quick pass to the uh, slot receiver. Trying to make a play to now get they're going it. deep down the slot and right down the seam. A man wide open, and it's Cody Pruitt. And that looked like a play that they've been waiting for all week. Good protection for the quarterback. Pruitt wide open down the seam. He picks it up. He'll move the ball well down the field, right down to the 24-yard line. About a 19-yard pickup. And the most positive play for the Highlanders as they are traveling up the valley here to play in Dallas tonight. It'll be the ball on the 23 yard line, first down and 10. And they're going right back to the air now, giving more time to the quarterback. And Abergast now using his legs to get out, takes a pretty hard hit, fundamentally taken down by Evan Courtney, starting running back, also a defensive back for this Dallas Dragons team. Yeah, it looked like they were gonna go to Cody Pruitt again, but he was held up and his quarterback saw he had to run. Defensive end. Lost contained there, and then he was able to pick up a first down. On the good scramble. Move the chains. Looks like now line of scrimmage is around the 14-yard line. That was a fairly hefty pickup on the QB keeper. from this Dallas Dragons defense tonight as they swarm to the ball. No room to run for great, Tristan Carnes. Great pursuit. Running back was trying to get to the corner, but there was no chance with all the different Dragons there to tackle him. No yardage picked up there. It'll be second down and 10. Ball on the 23-yard line, heading towards three minutes to go here in the first quarter. Abergast is going to go out on his own again, and if he keeps running the ball like that, dare I say he puts himself in jeopardy of injuring himself as well, but he has proven that he can get yardage on his own. Well, it looks like they were going for a quick out there, and it was covered really well. Again, the only chance he had is to, to run great coverage. 
Third down and five. North Eugene in the red zone, looking to strike back and even up this game, trailing seven to nothing. Man in motion. Good initial push from the offensive line, but nothing, nothing shaking Dallas right now on that defensive line. They seem to have every run play snuffed out before it ever gets called. Great push up the middle after the fake reverse. Not quite enough for a first down. I'm enjoying the scoreboard guys tonight. They've been giving me quite the workout about where the ball really is getting placed and how far it is to go. Right now, I'm looking at, I believe, to be fourth down and one to go on the five yard line. Not bringing out a field goal, so it looks like we're gonna be going. And again, a second timeout being called and it looks like the backup quarterback having some trouble. We'll stick around here and talk about it for a second, Mike. Great bounce back from North Eugene. They come out, they're a little bit flat on their offensive possession. Their first one, they punt it away. They give up a very easy score for Dallas and have come back now and march, the you know, march down the field with 149 on the clock. They're sitting in a fourth and one and have a chance to punch it in the end zone. Uh, they've had some really good change up in the plays right now. Quick plays to passes to end arounds and it's able to get them down the field. The quick pass game is really working well for him on this drive. I guess from your background, when you watch the game of football, how quickly can those adjustments be made inside a game by a coaching staff? Oh, uh, right away. I mean, it's the faster the better. Uh, sometimes it takes a while to make sure that they're, you know, it's a game of chess sometimes too. You don't want to make a decision and have it be wrong because they were setting you up for something else. But so far this drive, it looks like they've turned some things around. Well, fourth and one, we have our first really big moment of this game. North Eugene gonna go from the shotgun. They'll put a man in motion again. And they give it to their big running back. And I think he fell forward in the big man. Tristan Carnes, I think, got the yardage and it will move the chains. It'll be first down and goal to goal for North Eugene, but we will wait for the official call. Third and one, they ran the same play, it looks like twice. Was able to get the ball right up the middle and gain that yard for first and goal. And the markers do indicate that it is first down. It'll be a ball on the third, on the three yard line, a two yard pickup for Carnes. Carnes seems to be the workhorse for this offense. It's been in the backfield on every play and every down. Now they got the sweep. Trying to get Pruitt, who's had the nice catch on this drive, also in space to see if he can run it in on the sweep. Trying to keep the defense on their heels as well. They're not sure who they're going to go to. Leaves a lot of different options for them. Kind of a thunder and lightning thing. I mean, Pruitt seems to be the speed guy. Most definitely, most definitely. Pruitt's going to be split out to the left side. Alec Nolan. And they go back to Pruitt. And Pruitt only picks up about a yard. Tough treading here inside the red zone. They're very confident in this play. They're gonna, <laughs> they're gonna try to go at two yards at a time right now, but it's working. Well, if we're down, to, tenths, more. We're down to tenths of seconds on the uh, clock, it means we're under a minute, 40 seconds remaining here in the first quarter in a seven nothing game. The Dallas Dragons striking first. Arbogast has been having some trouble now as the backup. Third down and one, play call comes in. He'll put Pruitt in motion. They'll give it to Carnes. Carnes looked like he broke the plane, but there's no indication that he did. And now it's looking like a goal line stand for this Dallas Dragons defense. It'll most likely take us out of the first quarter, but a great defensive stand right now by Dallas. As the clock does tick away, We'll step away, and it is the Dallas Dragons on top seven to nothing on Valley TV, channel 17.
Well, if you're just joining us, you get to see one of the most exciting plays you get to ever see in football. Fourth down and one. It is absolutely a war of the trenches between the offensive and defensive line of the Highlanders and the Dragons. Dragons standing their ground. Michael Brown right now trying to even this game up is North Eugene trailing seven to nothing. This is what they practice for all the time. This is what you go over, why you work hard during the summertime. Let's see what they have. Carnes, the workhorse, is going to be in the backfield. Pruitt will be to his left. Pruitt goes in motion. Hand off to Carnes and coming around. The Dallas Dragons absolutely blow that play up, and the replay should probably show it is T.J. Dimmick. Great stand, Michael Brown. Just a great push up the middle. Experiencing some technical difficulties. We dropped our mic, but we're back live better than ever. Fourth down and one, and the Dragons do stuff the Highlanders. It'll be a long field for Dallas here to start the second quarter. 11.56 remaining in the first half. Stewart hands the ball off, and lots of room to run. Green turning it up, and man, does that guy have some wheels and moves. Is Dawson Bar Barcroft or Evan Courtney, but if it's number three, Evan Courtney turned something that was nothing into something. Yeah, Evan Courtney was able to get around there and many good blocks down the down the field. Trev Earhart with a great block down the field to spring him for another 15 yards. Started on their two yard line, 37 yard pickup on first down, and now breathing room for this offense that seems to be firing on all cylinders early in the season, leading seven to nothing. Ooh, a little trickeration right off the bat, feeling their oats, Mike. Keeping them off balance, that's the whole point right now. They see the counter going one way, the ball goes the other, able to get six yards off of that play. Jarrett Stewart gets a nice six yard pickup as he hands the ball off this Dallas Dragon offense, running the ball at will, left or right. Off the right side, Tristan Evans trying to find a lane run, but nowhere to go. But he does pick up enough yardage to give him a first down. Well, you see, he gets the ball. Almost a dropped exchange, actually, but great blocking still. And able to get up six yards for a first down on that play. Great job. Finishing strong, keeping his head up, feet churning. Dragons now push in to Highlander territory. Already leading by a touchdown. And there's going to be a pass, a little play action over the top. Floats it in, it is caught by Dimmick, and Dimmick takes it to the house. 48-yard touchdown for T.J. Dimmick, and the Dragons are on top, 13 to nothing. Wow. It looks like they set him up with the last play and ran play auction, basically off the same action, and it worked really well. well Dimmick, that's a, that's Dimmick a, running down the field like he wasn't gonna be stopped there. That's a nice wrinkle to have to your offense. You're able to run the ball at will, then tuck it down, get a little play action look, and then throw it over the top. Yeah, get that cornerback to hesitate for one second, that's gonna be a touchdown. Jarrett Stewart dropping in a dime, and a great almost block kick, but the kick is up and good. And the Dragons now on top, 14 to nothing on KWBT, Channel 17. Welcome back to Dallas, Oregon, and Dallas High School for some early season prep football between 5A the Dallas Dragons of the mid Willamette Valley League kick off away. High kick back to the Highlanders, and they'll take it around the 15, and it's Muff, but picked up. Not a lot of room to run for Pruitt, but Pruitt will take it out to about the 26-yard line. Got a little decent gain after a possible turnover, but they were able to regroup and 
get a positive gain out of it. Thought it was a 48-yard touchdown from Stewart to Dimmick, but it was a 48-yard touchdown to Treve Earhart, tight end and linebacker, senior, six foot one, 185-pounder, finding himself deep in the secondary for the easy touchdown, giving us our score of 14 to nothing as the Highlanders come back out now, and they know now got to put points on the board. Getting some inside info from guys on the other side of the booth. Pick up on that a little bit later. We're gonna blow that call dead as a penalty flag is thrown. Looks like it'll be on the offense. Dead ball, snap and fraction. Offense number 55, five yard penalty, first down. A snap and fraction, what did he do? Did he like, did he fake it? Um, he could have just flinched, and sometimes that's enough to get a penalty. Ticky tack. <laughs> First down and 14 ball now placed on the 23 yard line. Highlanders trailing by two scores. New quarterback in the game, and he airs it out immediately. Taking special notice, that sure looks like Tyler Olson. Excuse me, Drew Williams. Good play action work. Just an overthrown pass because he may have had a chance to go somewhere with that if the ball was just a little bit more perfect. But great attempt. Drew Williams coming out and showing a willing and capable firearm, wanting to get the ball and push it downfield as Carnes has not really been able to pick up the yardage they need in the running game, and they can't get the ball to Pruitt quite enough, and they're going right back to the air, and it was to Carnes who just didn't look that passing. Trying to work the screen there, and it was fairly well set up, but the pass again is just a little bit overthrown. He just came in the game. He's probably a little bit, he's got the juice flowing right now. He's just got to get under control, get going. After that last drive, they should be able to get something going again. Kind of a traditional spot for a North Eugene in this first half, Mike. They've had a lot of third and long situations, which does put pressure on the quarterback to make the play. Most definitely, and it looks like they want to do the quick passes, and you can't really do a quick pass and get a first down when it's third and 14. Not as easily. As they're looking to the sideline for their play. Back judge throwing a penalty flag. Probably took a little too much time on that. Offense, five yards, third down. They want to make an adjustment. They're looking to the coach for the play, but it is taking a little bit more time with the new quarterback in there. Luke Arbogast had come in for his teammate, Alec Tucker, who had the kidney injury that we referenced earlier in the game. Arbogast not getting the offense in position to strike so they brought in Drew Williams and now finds himself in a precarious third and 19 deep in his own territory needs to protect it but he goes back to the air and that's exactly what I was talking about throwing it right down the seam there Michael kind of telegraphed where he wanted that ball to go well there's only one receiver going close to the first down there and there's four Dallas DBs able to stay back there and somebody got their hand up there Look like Evan Courtney again. He's been all making plays on both sides all over the place. Evan Courtney flashing speed in the running game and having timely hands and being in the right place at the right time to knock down that pass. Pruitt looks like he's back to kick. Slow snap, Pruitt gets it up, gets good hang time. Ooh. And not the penalty you want. Looks like it was Tainan Ames, basically. Didn't look that one in too well. Hit the receiver, and it will be a penalty. And Dallas will inherit great field position, leading by two touchdowns. Working hard to get down the field, being blocked, and we're working really hard. Sometimes you can't see where that returner is, but you always have to be aware you're going to get that 15-yard penalty. Well, apparently 
Apparently the officials want to talk to coach. Mike and I just had our eardrums blown out. 10 minutes and six seconds left here, and that ball is What was that? Oh, never mind. <laughs> it's okay. Mike getting used to having the headset on and having somebody talk into his ear, but we certainly know that the official wanted to get the coach's attention on the Dallas sideline is they're on the 28-yard line, and they are knocking on blowing the doors off this game real early. Courtney running on the right side, protecting the ball well. Good tackle made by Jake Hall. Well, once again, they're running the counter. Hasn't been stopped too much, so. What is the design behind the counter? What's the block? What is it intended to do? Well, the it, it tries to get the defense to go one way. They see the play going a certain way. It's just enough to slow them down. They go the other way. They have a better chance of busting open a bigger play. But you'll take five yards or six yards every play as well. Move the ball to the 22-yard line. Nine and a half minutes remaining here in the first half on Valley TV 17. And Stewart now is going to go on his own, but he has a man wide open. And I can't tell if it's tree or gimmick. The light is not quite there. Looks like it's a 22-yard strike to Treve Earhart. Again, you see the counter action, and they, they've seen it so many times. He had two options there. The DB decided to go with the up man and number 45, it is Dimmick, Dimmick with, a, with another touchdown there. So Dimmick and Earhart on back-to-back -back drives score big touchdowns, a 22-yarder and a 48-yarder as we get ready for the extra point. And Dallas looking to go on top, 21 to nothing. Kick is up and it is good. Signal from the officials is no good. It's a missed extra point. We'll be back for more second quarter action on Valley TV Channel 17. The tight end is going to be open every time if they keep running this play. He's coming from the opposite side able to just get open. He's blending himself in there, and none of the DBs are seeing him come across the field. He's running a crossing pattern. It's been open every time. A little telestrator action coming from Michael Brown on his maiden voyage, having a great time getting used to each other's company up here in the booth. It's a 21 to nothing game. Dallas has scored on all three of its drives and has done it with quite a bit of ease. Mike talking about how that counter play and that action basically fools the defense and is now opening up that play action game that's letting Dallas and this Dragon offense be able to get big plays over the top in the passing game as well. Right now for North Eugene doing a little bit of reeling and maybe a moment where you're really going to find out what kind of fortitude you have is they switch quarterbacks. It'll be Drew Williams in again for his second set of downs. He'll take the ball from the 29-yard line, trailing by three scores. Bad snap. Picks it up, covers it up well, but not a good start to this drive. They look a little bit off right now. They had a good drive two drives ago, so they just need to find that magic again and, and get back on those same plays. But the snap does help right off the bat. Couple-yard loss for this Highlander offense. Hasn't spent much time on the field in this first half. Trying to find its rhythm. They'll hand the ball to Carnes, and Carnes finally does have a little bit of room to run. But Mike, you probably see on a play like that, he just doesn't turn north and south. He keeps going east and west there. He was trying to find somewhere to go. The receiver wasn't able to hold his block out there, so he was trying to get to the outside, but the Dallas defense was there. Dallas has shown pretty much on the defensive side of the ball that they can contain. They're swarming tonight. Wearing their Wolverine helmets, orange stripe, cool looking helmets. Williams was going to throw. He decides not to. He's got nowhere to run, and he's going to be sacked. He was third down and five, needed to get the ball near the 40 yard line. Tried to go for another quick pass, nothing there. Pocket was collapsing. Where's an interesting moment in the game. It's fourth down and six, balls on the 33 yard line. It's the loss of one on the play. Williams is gonna stay in the backfield as we speak. I don't know if this is gonna be a design to see if they can draw him off sides. 
There's going to be a quick pooch kick, but it looks like they're going for it. Trailing 21 to nothing, trying to get some spark or life into this game. And in all opportunities I saw that Williams wanted to throw that ball, it seems like he doesn't trust himself on his first read. He hasn't, and play after play, the defense is just solid. He takes the time, doesn't see that first look. They're looking for that, that quick pass and nowhere to go. He's going to get sacked. Coverage sack, great job by the whole defense there. Dallas now getting a second opportunity in great field position now, 33-yard line with this high-powered, high-octane offense of Jarrett Stewart right now. They counter again. Handoff, it looked like to Tristan Evans, and Evans plugs right through the hole and picks up first down yardage. Just picking away, just 10 yards up the middle. Great block and another counter. There's so much action going each way. I'm trying to keep up with myself and the defenses as well. Fake to the one running back and then 10 yards up the middle for Trev Earhart. Jarrett Stewart. Senior leading this team, six foot four, 210 pounder. He's been able to throw and give the ball to a bevy of players. And now a handoff to one of the smallest players on the field in Bryson Grillo, 5'8", 165 pounds, if that. Grillo comes around from the outside, and this time he actually just goes with it. Almost gets it outside, great block there by Evan Courtney to, to let him get another five or six yards, still working down the field, great job blocking downfield as well. Six yard pickup, it'll be second down and four. Stewart now has got a man wide open in the flat. He's gonna, he's gonna go for Devin Floyd. Same play action move and it looks like there are a lot of receivers open on those plays, but just, just a little bit behind, thrown behind. Again, the play action. See somebody to go to. If it's a catch, it's probably a touchdown, but just a little bit behind, like I said. <laughs> Maybe the first mistake we see Stewart make tonight in this offense. Really, it's been very efficient tonight. Stewart gets a hard call there, uses his cadence maybe to draw the defense offside. They're, they want to make a tackle, and they were ready to go, but the ball hadn't moved yet. Dead ball, encroachment on the defense. Five-yard penalty, result first down. Easy first down picked up for Dallas there on the encroachment penalty by the Highlanders. TJ Dimmick, number 45, checking into the game, scored the last touchdown for this Dragon offense. So look for that play action that might drag him across the back of the end zone and Stewart looking for his big receiver. Courtney takes it, slices and dices. 11 yards, 27 nothing, and the hurt is on. It looks like practice worked this week for them. They're able to get right up the middle, snaps the ball, same counter, three lead blockers there, great hole opened up by Bryce Miller, able to bring the running back to a touchdown. I mean, you got a light coming home after winning a tough game a week ago. 47 to 30, Park Rose. You got 28 points on the board and there's still six minutes in the first half. You gotta be feeling all right. Most are they, definitely. Are they backing this up, Mike? Is there a penalty? Must have been a penalty. Wow, they called the holding. They holding on that one. Wow, they didn't, the officials didn't tell us anything. They kept it to themselves like a secret. <laughs> now I guess it's first and 20. I think practice still work. Ren Bet, same play. And Courtney just decides, well, I don't want an 11 yard touchdown. I'll take a 20 yard touchdown. Dallas on top, 27 and up. Counter action's working every time. Is it just the fact that North Eugene, is it they don't have the personnel or is it an issue of like, what, what, what aren't they doing? It looks like it right now. I mean, they're running the same play. He's able to get blocks down the field. There's, he goes untouched. It's, it's just a really great play. I don't want to sound redundant, but yeah, nice way to start you know, your first home game of the season. You're up 26 to nothing, six minutes left to go in the first half. 
and everything that they worked on seems to be prescribed for this offense to work at a very efficient level. As the extra point is up, it is good, and it's 27 to nothing. We will step away for more second quarter action on Valley TV, Channel 17. to Dallas, Oregon and Valley 17. Six minutes and four seconds remaining in the first half in what has been, as I like to recall in Rocky IV, a one-sided affair so far at 27 to nothing. Dallas moving the ball at will through the air and on the ground. Michael Brown, my color commentator, in his first game tonight, just picking up just how well Dallas practiced this week getting everything they want out of the running game that has opened up an easy, easy aerial attack as well. They're feeling good out there, I have to imagine. It's a nice, cool night, and they're not working very hard yet. I mean, they're, they're doing really well, but North Eugene needs to, needs to get some things going right now. Drew Williams coming back, not underneath center, but in the shotgun, putting Pruitt in the backfield, now maybe going to try to speed things up for this offense. Pruitt has pretty much been the lightning of their offense so far as he's caught a few balls. I want to make sure it's not 32 as our eyes are not so good anymore now that we're 40, Mike. <laughs> Mike just had his birthday the other day, but uh, obviously my 40-year-old eyes didn't see that it was number 32, and it was Tavion Ouellette, the sophomore, on the carry for three yards. And if they can just keep this up, you know, three, four yards a pop, it's enough to get a drive going. Defensive line for the Dallas Dragons tonight, led by Justin Ingram. He's six foot four, 325 pounds. I didn't do any homework on this, but I would say that probably is college material. For sure. A lot of double and triple teams coming his way tonight, but everybody is swarming to the ball. Brings up a third and a little bit long. Be third and seven to be exact. Third ball and seven, the, thank you. Be on the 23 yard line, gonna have to pop this ball outside the 30-yard line for a first down, just under five minutes in the first half. Bad snap as Williams doesn't look it in, and the ball is loose, and it looks like it's gonna be recovered by the Dragons. And anything that could go wrong, 43 picking it up, Shreve Earhart, a touchdown now, and a fumble recovery. And Dallas did get the ball there. Bad snap, you see that? He tries to recover. It looks like they're running a screen to the outside. But Trev Barhart was there, ready to, ready to pounce on the quarterback and then the ball. It's a pretty st strong indication that Dallas has some very, very skilled players on their team. Evan Courtney, number three, a big part of this game tonight on both sides of the football. Shreve Earhart, TJ Dimmick. Have a nice foundation and nucleus here, led by Jarrett Stewart, number eight. And he gives that ball to Courtney, and Courtney gets wrapped up. You'd think they would have blown the whistle dead, but they took him to the ground. He still is trying to get a touchdown, and so the refs are letting him try. They ran the same end around action and ran the ball right up the middle. The play's been working over and over again. Head coach of the Dallas Dragons, Tracy Jackson. I think we're going to have a chance to speak with him a little bit later in the game, but. So far, I would say, kind of pitching the perfect game. I know it's not a baseball game tonight, but everything he's dialed up for this offense and his defense working. Second down and five. Courtney just scoots those feet, and he scoots them all the way into the end zone, waiting for a sign from the official to say he's in the end zone. Scorekeepers put it up that it's 33 to nothing. <laughs> and from my vantage point, it looked, we'll call it good. Touchdown. Same thing, just a run to the right side, and he's just able to get in there. Great, great blocking across the board. To my account, two touchdowns for Courtney now in the game. Earhart and Dimmick with another, the other two. It might actually be Courtney with three. I will say that North Eugene is getting close on these extra points. They may have a chance to block one of these. 
33 0, 358. We'll be back for the remainder of the second quarter on Valley 17. Thirty-four nothing. The Dallas Dragons in full control tonight. Wasn't able to get a hold of the catch there, and as the ball went down the ground, he reached down. His knee looks like it touched the ground, and it stopped the play right away. Thirty-four nothing. Dallas Dragons all over their visitors tonight. Well, North Eugene looks to have a smaller team. Not as many players playing, so the, the Dallas team's able to just keep pounding on them, and it's tough. I don't think you can say it any better than that. It's not fun probably when you know you are maybe outmatched in regards to, you know, the skill level and maybe the number of players that you have at your disposal to come in and out of the game and to stay fresh. But everybody's still trying. They're, they're pushing really hard. Just need to get a little bit of momentum. Williams hands it off, immediately met at the line of scrimmage, the would-be runner for the Highlanders, and not much there on first down. Not inside right now. Defensive line is putting up a fight, and they're winning that fight right now. Haven't seen Tristan Carnes. Carnes, a much bigger bruising type of running back was able to get to the outside and pick up some yards early in this game, but haven't seen him recently. And Williams now a first chance to get the ball downfield, airs it out, throwing it into double coverage, looking for number 22, Cody Pruitt. Trying to find that space between the corner and the safety. Needed to be a perfect pass, but it was just a little bit overthrown. Out of bounds. Incompletion will bring up third down and 10. And the Highlanders find themselves in a big hole, needing to pick up some first down just to give themselves some breathing room and some confidence. Man in motion, play blown dead. Laundry on the ground in the form of a yellow flag. I didn't see that one. On the defense, five yard penalty, third down. It looks like offsides on the defense encroachment. Just a defensive penalty. It'll move the ball five yards forward. It'll make it five yards easier, hopefully, for North Eugene to see if they can get out of their own shadow right now. Need to push this ball to the 25-yard line. Third and five, three minutes, 23 seconds of action remaining in the first half on Valley TV. No, Valley 17. I'm going to get it right, Ken. We're going to keep working this thing out. Into the flat, Williams goes. And nothing there as the tackler is Spencer Hibbert. You see, he throws to the outside. It's a quick screen pass. Um, the receiver missed the block, and Tristan Evans was there to make the tackle on a loss. Fourth down and nine. And... I don't know, but it looks like Coach Rick Raish is going to call his last time out and get the special teams out on the field. We'll step away and get you back here for second quarter action on Valley 17. While we were away, the Highlanders punted the ball back to the Dragons. The Dragons will be inheriting good field position once again. Third time inside this first half that they will actually start in North Eugene territory. It'll be on the 42-yard line on top by five scores. Only a missed extra point and maybe a defensive penalty are the only things you can point to that have not gone the Dallas Dragons way in this first half. Again, a lot of easy running and big holes for this Dragon offense right now. More runs up the middle and great blocking. Two handoffs. It's a little bit different play than you're used to seeing, but great blocking from everybody down the field. TJ Dimmick with another great block down the field to spring him open. First down. Dimmick on the right side of the offensive line playing a tight end position. 
as he gets a great block. And they just are pounding the ball up the middle, left and right at will, getting what they want. It's another first down for Dallas. Uh, just great opening openings there. They, they make a hole for him, and he doesn't miss the opportunity. Dragon offensive line getting the push and leverage that you need to control a game from start to finish. It's been on full display over the first 28 minutes, or excuse me, it's 12 minutes, about 20 minutes of this game. And if it isn't broke, you don't fix it. Stewart hands it off again. And good yardage picked up on first down by this Dragon offense. It's, uh, it's either been that or the play action off of it, and both plays have worked. I mean, there's very different versions of it, but each, each version's worked. Checking into the backfield, Bryson Grillo. Bit of a change of pace. He's actually going to be on the right side. Handoff comes from Stewart. No official signal, but that ball getting closer and closer to the goal line. Up the middle or another sweep. Uh, they, they're able to get another first down. It's a sweep. Couple lead blockers, even with a missed block, they were able to get six yards. First down and goal to goal. It is a small field right now for Dallas. On that the one Demick yard is line. blocking great on almost every play. Push up the middle. Spencer Hibbert couldn't quite tell if it was number 15. Dark on that side of the field. Not that it doesn't matter, it's just another score, a sixth score of the first half. They have not been stopped on offense yet, Michael Brown. Oh, uh, they're dominant. Uh, every play they're running, again, up the middle, just a simple handoff. Somebody's pulling, blocking his own team, but they're, they're all in the end zone at that point. 58 seconds, 58.3 remaining here in a very dominating first half for the Dallas Dragons. Point Snap is good, kick is up, and it's no good. A second missed extra point will step away and we'll be back for the conclusion of the first half on Valley 17. Welcome back to Dallas, Oregon where the Dallas Dragons are a perfect six for six. Each time they've touched the ball offensively, they've scored touchdowns. Pruitt has the ball for North Eugene, has been the most positive or brightest under these Friday night lights for the Highlanders. 49.2 seconds remaining in a first half that has seen North Eugene not have a lot of things go the way they'd like to offensively or defensively. They had a quarterback switch and they are using other personnel in the backfield to see if they can get some sort of consistency as they do head into the second half in what will arguably be for the Highlanders coaching staff an opportunity to get a lot of players in there and get them opportunities at the varsity level to improve their skill set. And that's how they learn. Flag going to be thrown from the near side. And that flag is where you see illegal formation or encroachment. We'll see. See who's going to get the penalty. It's going to be illegal procedure against the offense. And again, I think one of the things we're learning about for Drew Williams, he's a, he, he might be a junior, but maybe he's about ready to inherit a team. And these are the times it's really tough when you know that your job is to get everybody. Illegal formation, five formation. men in the backfield. Offense, five yards, first down. Falls on the quarterback to kind of know where everybody needs to be. You know, honestly, you're an orchestrator. You're somebody that basically, you know, you're the one that has control over the entire offense. And I think the young quarterback learning that tonight. The clock now rolling under 40 seconds. 
not necessarily a place you want to go deep or throw passes over the middle at this point. Try to get to the halftimer group. First down and 15 ball on the 21 yard line. Drew Williams in the shotgun. Again, a high snap. He'll get the ball to cool it. Cool it will run the ball on the right side, and he literally is being hit like a pinata. Nowhere to get when the whole defense is back there. All you could see was whiplash after whiplash on the hit. He was able to make one tackler miss, and but the rest of the defense, they're swarming. The clock hits triple zeros, and it is the Dallas Dragons in full control. 40 to nothing over North Eugene and the Highlanders. We'll step away for a break on Valley 17. Welcome to Dallas, Oregon. I'm Matt Palumbo. I am joined alongside my compatriot, Michael Eugene Brown II, otherwise known as Michael Brown. It is a 40 to nothing Dallas Dragons lead over the North Eugene Highlanders. Interesting halftime, Mike. We were talking to some of the people up here in the booth and we found out North Eugene had to deal with the fires that are ravaging the Columbia Gorge in the state of Oregon by not having practice outside and had not have a, have not had a contact practice since last week. And in fact, up until Wednesday, wanted to cancel this game. Yeah, it's like running simulations all week, but not actually doing anything, unfortunately. It's showing up tonight, but got a whole half for them to see if they can make some adjustments and make some plays. Absolutely, Dragons deferred to have this uh, opening possession of the second half, leading 40 to nothing. They come out onto the field and they will start with starting quarterback, Jarrett Stewart. Jarrett Stewart, a 48 yard touchdown to Treve Earhart and another touchdown to TJ Dimmick in the first half. Evan Courtney, number three coming out of the backfield for three touchdowns as well for this Dragons offense. Seven yards on first down, and Dallas picking up right where they left off. Same type of play, just running right up the middle. The handoff, see a couple of people pulling, like to pull the tight end and the tackle, and they're just leading the way for six and seven yard gains each play, great job. Second down and two is one of those manageable plays, and right now with the offensive line playing so well, look for Stewart maybe to put something over the top. 
And for the first time all night, snuffed out. Bryson Grillo has nowhere to run. And the Highlanders stuff him. It'll be third down. It'll actually be a loss on the play. It looks like there's an injury on the play. Taking a look, man down in the middle of the field. It is for the visitors of North Eugene. 61. It looks like it is Dean Bryan. Defensive tackle, 5'10", 215 pounds. He's up onto one knee, but definitely favoring something in the lower extremities and does not look to be feeling very well at all. He came out of the pile where the tackle was made. I wasn't sure if it was him on the tackle, but obviously he came up injured after that play. Trainer out to take a look at him. We'll step away here on Valley 17. Well, we are still concerned about number 61, Dean Bryan. Dean Bryan does get up, but he does not want to put any pressure on his right leg as the home crowd of Dallas giving their best and cheering on the defensive lineman for the Highlanders. His teammates come over to give him some support. And Mike, we've been talking about this all night, but I mean, just the sheer size and players on the Dallas sideline versus what we see on the opposing sideline. And now you're down another player on that defensive line that has been really been exposed tonight. Yeah, just the players uh, that don't usually play, I'll get a chance to play now though. Again, that double handoff. Grillo picks it up. He'll take it near the first down marker. And the chains move. That would be another. He was running the same play up the middle with the double handoff. It is tough for the linebackers to see where the ball is going, and that's why they're getting three or four yards at least on those plays each time. Coming out of the huddle. Dragon offense now at midfield almost and looking to strike here again. And I'll tell you, when you look at Evan Courtney, he doesn't look like 170 pounds. Or was it As he comes him? around. Or was it Grillo? I'm sorry, I don't know. It looked like it was Courtney. Um, it looks like. I know, we're having trouble with the numbers. Oh, we actually, we got it now. Tristan Evans, I want to give you your credit. Tristan Evans, good run. Great run. He was carrying tacklers down the field for an extra six or seven yards at the end of that play. It was a great effort on his part. They probably don't like seeing him. He's 215 pounds, and Courtney Evans is 170. It's got to look like a Mack truck coming at him. And there's a penalty flag down there, and that comes in the direction that usually you get a holding penalty. Some holding, it probably will come up that way. The same play, same general idea but it uh, looks like somebody got a hold of the jersey on the way through the line. Man, looking at Tristan Evans come off the field, looking down at him on the sideline, number 13. That guy, he just, he, he looks like a football player. Offense, Those definitely. 56, 10 yards from the spot of the foul. First down. I don't know if there's been any offensive penalties on Dallas tonight, but they'll back this up 10 yards and it'll put them in back near midfield. I don't think they'll do it at this point, but this would be a great time for that play action pass in order to get a, an easy first down possibly. Only one wide receiver out in this set. There's a new wrinkle to the offense, a great seal block. And from the 46 going to the house, it'll be a second half touchdown to start. The Dallas Dragons are just walking away with this game, 40 six to nothing. They flip it out to Camden Frizzell. And Frizzell gets a great block and he's got nothing but pay dirt in front of him. Well, you see, they're not sure they run a pitch and when he gets outside, there's four lead blockers and he makes a couple of moves and has gone to the house. Nobody's catching him at that point. Great run by Camden. Big play and explosions coming from this Dallas Dragons offense. Really got to like it so far. They scored 47 points in an entire game. They're looking to put their 47th point on the board tonight. 
extra point is up. It is good. We'll be back for more third quarter action here on Valley 17. Dallas Dragons are putting on a performance tonight on the offensive side of the ball as they kick it away. They have had the ball seven times tonight and they have scored seven touchdowns. Their last touchdown coming on a wrinkle play coming out of their running offense where Frizzell gets the pitch from Stewart and really the tailback did all of the work after that. Yeah, they keep having the, the plays run up the middle most of the game, and when you just change it up just a little bit when everybody got used to the, the other play on defense, just. Just been informed by the booth, kind of an important thing. We're going to have a running clock now. I don't know if that's a 5A rule, uh, but it looks like the clock is just going to be running. Well, especially with them not having any practice this week, I mean, it's a tough result right now. Could be something maybe even the coaches talked about. I said, hey, if it gets to a certain point, hey, look, you know, we don't want to get anybody hurt here tonight. Uh, what we understand right now is there's a great rebuilding uh, going on in North Eugene uh, and a tough night to come on the road. Mike's going to get us some information here in a minute about kind of what's going on. Uh, yeah, once it gets to 45 points, OSAA rules says we're going to have a running clock for the rest of the game. I don't know if we call exactly a mercy rule, but I think in light of the information that we got at halftime, probably the right thing to do, and, and it really is probably to protect really you know, the players, as Williams does not come out to start the second half, and they do bring in Luke Arbogast again. And now tempers have flared, and you do not want to see this. This is where the coaches do need to step in, intercede, and make sure these players know what they need to do right now. And everybody really did a good job. Uh, There's a couple of people kind of staying in the, in, the, in the action there. But you see on the play, I mean, the running back's trying to get – there's nowhere to go. The, the defensive line, there's four people there making a gang tackle. But then you see a little bit of extra action from the running back kicking him, and then players are defending their own teammates. But it's time to just get back to the huddle for everybody. And it worked. Yeah. Tough. I mean, you, I mean, when you think about this kind of thing, like I said, I think we kind of sensed it in the first half, and we get, we've been learning information as we go on through the game tonight, Mike. You know that there might be some agitation well, every, on the opposing seeds that they're playing this game, and then clearly they, they they had a tough loss last week, and you know not getting the practice that they need. They they're vulnerable right now, and and they're not having a very very good night, unfortunately. They're frustrated. Uh, you just have to keep your head when that happens. Now the refs are going to have to figure out uh, who the penalties are on because there's a lot of people out there running around. But, again, they did get it under control really quickly because it looked like it could have turned something really quick, but it didn't. Got to imagine everything offsets, Mike. We probably just get to back to second down and eight and play it over again. 21. I think their uh, 21 may have been penalized. Again, the running back did. So they're walking this off. This penalty is going against North Eugene. They're not saying that these are no, offsetting at all. I think, I think all. there was two for North Eugene and one. No, that wouldn't be an offsetting. So I'm not sure what happened there. Well, they didn't give us a verbal explanation, but you have to imagine it takes, as far as I know, it takes two to tango. They're speaking to the coaches right now, though, to kind of break down what happened. If we get word up here, we'll let you know. Dead ball. Personal foul. Offense number 21. Dead ball. Personal foul. Defense 63. Dead ball. Personal foul. Offense number 18. By rule, number 21's foul is flagrant. Number 21 has disqualified himself from further participation. This, I, this you do not want to see. No, and, and, and again, it was just frustration. He was tackled. He was getting tackled, and he was trying to get away from everybody, but he, he kicked, and you, you can't do that. You Trist, can't do that. Tristan Carnes was kind of the workhorse in carrying that workload early on in the game, 
and didn't see much action in that second quarter, which I found to be interesting. And then here, starting off in the third quarter on what was a fairly innocent play, turns into the ejection and disqualification of Carnes. And I don't know if that has implications now for future games, but from my understanding at the OSAA level, he may not be eligible to play a week from now. I'm not sure about that either, but I'm sure the coach will uh, have some work for him to do uh, either way. <laughs> yep. Luke Arbogast in the shotgun, third down and 21. Gets it to a wide up receiver, keeps his knee. Well, they're going to say his knee was down. I thought that Murphy was able to keep his knee off the turf and was going to have a chance to run. Also on that play before, Mike, with all of the infractions, they said that Justin Stearns also picked up an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty and for you, Dallas. You see on that play, it's just a quick pass to the outside. And uh, again, you're trying to have the, the receiver make a play, but the Dallas defense is swarming and able to get to him before he gets too much of a positive game. We were here earlier again, Mike, and I know this is tough, but I, is it you really don't have faith in your punter or, and then I understand you're down as yards are picked up, but they're gonna give Dallas the ball back. And for a team that is perfect so far on the offensive side of the ball, why would you not want to work for something future down the line when you need to be able to punt? Well, you see, they, I, I don't understand why they're not punting in that situation uh, just to, you know, give the defense a better chance of getting a stop. But they may have their own, obviously, their own idea what they, they should do there. Um, that receiver, if he makes somebody miss, he has a chance to pick up a first down. But it didn't happen that time, and Dallas takes over. This marks, I believe, the fourth time in this football game the Dallas has had the ball to start a drive inside North Eugene territory. And we do have a new quarterback in the game. It's miscommunication on who was supposed to be out there. But. First play for scrimmage. Looks like it's Landon Gardner. Still a little bit chippy after the play. And now another player down for North Eugene. Picking up the number quickly there. It looks like it's Treshawn Johnson. Um, you see that uh, he's making the tackle. And he threw him back down after he, uh, he made the initial tackle. Camden Frizzell did not like that, but we still do have a player down. Player down. We will get you more of an update when we come back after this break on Valley 17. North Eugene having to go through some attrition here in the second half. They have lost Dean Bryant to an apparent leg injury earlier in this third quarter. And now being helped off the field is Treshawn Johnson with what appears to be another leg injury. The Dallas Dragons have the ball on the 17 yard line. Uh, at least with the break, it might uh, get the tempers to kind of calm down, which would be good for all the kids. Cooler heads must prevail here. I, I think one of the things that the OSAA and all high school athletics endeavor to do is to impart this idea of sportsmanship. And I understand you're playing a physical game with a lot of emotion in it, but there is no room, obviously, for the things that you know can escalate and get out of hand. So hopefully you're right. It'll give it an opportunity for everybody to kind of calm down. Landon Gardner will go back to work. Second down and 20. As I'm uninformed of a penalty, potentially. Gardner hands the ball off and coming off his defensive end position. Spencer Wilson laying the wood. Trying to run the ball up the middle again and yeah, the defensive line made a stop. Colby Johnson seeing his first action tonight. Nobody, See, no one blocked, no one blocked him and he was able to get in there and make a, a great sure tackle. Seeing some of the depth now of the Dallas Dragons team, a lot of sophomores seeing action here late in this third quarter. More uh, after the play, a little shove at the end of that play.
frustration shown for everybody right now on the North Eugene side. And it's tough. There's actually a responsibility on Dallas' side of this because you kind of know that you have them at their wits' end. You see uh, number eight uh, just go a little bit after the play, but they're not going to have any uh, any chance of letting anybody get extra Dead hits ball. in at this point. Personal foul. Defense number eight. Half the distance to the goal. First down. Well, number eight, you're safe. You're not on our official program. We can't call you, but hey. Well, again, I mean, if this was any other time of the game, it probably wouldn't have been a, an infraction. But after these uh, penalties just now, uh, they're, again, they're not going to let anything happen. We'll step away with this time out, and we will have the conclusion of the third quarter here on Valley 17. Well, we came back maybe slightly late. It was a broken play for the offense of the Dallas Dragons. But Landon Gardner, sophomore, six foot, 155 pounds, stiff armed the defender, and picked up the needed yardage to get the first down. And the Dragons are knocking on the door again. Yeah, he, uh, as soon as that mishap happened at the beginning of the play, he was just wide open. And uh, at that point, he's just trying to outrun the defender, but still picks up a first down. Tyler, Tyler Olsen, the recipient of the stiff arm. Good effort on his part, though, too. First down and three, handoff to a Dragon backfield or running back, and there is another score. It'll be touchdown number eight. I think that's my quick math. And you see, they just hand it to him up the middle. He has a couple of lead blockers, but the push on that offensive line, uh, the, it's tough for the North Eugene team to kind of keep up with them and, and make a stop there. Great play up the middle. I seem to have dropped my binoculars out the window to get everybody's numbers <laughs> maybe, here. Maybe, so. maybe, maybe that is something we might want to procure before our next uh, broadcast and telecast. Maybe that's something that uh, our, uh, our aging eyes need to uh, work on. <laughs> Share a telescope up here. <laughs> <laughs> They'll put the points on the board. It'll make it 54 to nothing. We'll be back for more third quarter action here on Valley 17. Back live in an action. Kickoff going to North Eugene. Cody Pruitt was the deep man. It's a little bit a little bit of an opening there. I thought uh, he may have made a play, but it was a good return to get some, uh, try to get some momentum going for the offense. I mean, nothing against it. I mean, when you get to this point in a game with as lopsided as the score is, you might take some personal pride if you're the Dallas Dragons. Can you actually hold them scoreless tonight? Well, for sure. You have the younger players in at this point, and uh, they're all trying to learn the game and play the game. They've been playing for a few years, most of them. And, uh, yeah, it's still a battle. You still have the starters for... North Eugene, they're going to hope to try to make something with the backups from Dallas. Arbogast in the backfield. Wants to throw the ball, thought about handing it off. Everything kind of went into slow motion, and almost everybody stopped. Yeah, the, uh, the receivers all kind of stopped their routes on that. I think, again, it was a short pass, but no one was open. Uh, doesn't seem like they were putting a full rush on there. Give the quarterback a little bit more time to, to try to make a play, but they couldn't find anybody open. Arbogast had a couple of nice early receptions coming from a couple of receivers early on in the game, but really never got his footing or his confidence and was removed in place of Drew Williams. The discipline on the defensive side of the football for Dallas tonight has been very impressive. Again, penetration every play up the middle. Able to stop it before the play even gets started. The running back does, running back's trying to get something going, but he has nowhere to go when uh, there's two or three defensive linemen in his face. Kyle Deem came off the field for Dallas. Looks like he might have hurt something, but taking his helmet off, but seems to be all right. First down and 10. Now under 30 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Pruitt went up high to try to catch 
the pass, but it was out of his reach. Another pass on the sideline that uh, went over his head. Nice effort by the receiver, but again, just a little bit overthrown. When we return, it will be fourth down and 10 on the 30 yard line for the Highlanders offense. And they are in a hole that they will not recover from, trailing 54 to nothing. Stay tuned for fourth quarter action on Valley 17. And in a surprise turn of events, it looks like North Eugene might actually now punt the ball away. Have been going for it on fourth down several times throughout this game and just basically gifting field position that Dallas has taken advantage of all night. The orange in black is basically in full effect. Pruitt gets off a fairly good kick. Everybody running away from it gets a favorable bounce for North Eugene. Ball will be down right around the 36 yard line. Brockton give her to get on the ball just now. Uh, yeah, it was a decent punt to at least change the field position a little bit. But uh, Dallas has been tough all night and uh, we'll see what happens here. Ball actually being placed on the 32 yard line. So getting a little bit better by the second for North Eugene. Coming out for the second time, Landon Gardner will lead this Dragon offense in the fourth quarter. Hands it off to Colby Johnson and he's just treated like a pinball by that defensive line. Taken down really quickly. Great job on the North Eugene defense to, to get a stop there. Just a two yard game. Gardner looks like going back and forth to the sideline, getting the play calls, coming back in, getting his team settled. He'll give it right back to Colby Johnson and why shouldn't he, but wow, did you see that defensive lineman? Spencer Wilson, that's the second time he's just come basically unhinged and just put the hit on Yeah, you see the they're running the sweep here, almost a loss of the ball, but makes one man miss, but Spencer Wilson's there, and you, you like the effort everybody's putting on here still with the game, uh, just being out of reach for North Eugene, but everybody's still working really hard. But great tackle by Spencer Wilson. Third and four on the 38 yard line, Dragon offense, maybe for the first time, actually having to think about something on third down. They hand the ball off. Best I could tell, Noah Luker, another sophomore, got the ball. Brought it close to the first down, but I think he's going to be just short. And the Dragon offense looks like they're going nowhere but back to the huddle. Looks like they just gave it to him, actually. So it looks like uh, it was four, uh, first down there on that play. I'd like to know what it's like to be six foot one and fall forward and get a first down. <laughs> So change it up there. They run the same double handoff play, but it's stopped in the backfield. Lots of players seeing action, just seeing 38 come into the game. Tristan Beard. This team is just stock full of sophomores right now, and they're seeing meaningful playing time in regards to the number of snaps that they're seeing. Obviously not as competitive a battle as you'd like to see, but getting much needed experience for the sophomores of the Dragon team. Got a helmet off on the play. Beard comes into the game and gets the handoff and then Kyle Alexander's helmet comes off as he tries to make the tackle for North Eugene. Run the sweep again. Uh, and the defensive line has just uh, pushed everybody back. He's The running back is trying to get some yards. He's pushing. It takes four guys to take him down, though. Great, great two-yard run there. Third and seven. I think this has been the longest potential conversion for this Dallas offense tonight. And they'll run that sweep to the short side of the field. And nowhere to go. And no alley for number 22, Isaiah McIntosh. He was looking for an opening, but uh, as you see... 
hits one of his own man in the in the backfield and still trying to make a play, but the uh, North Eugene defense was uh, there to stop him. Well, here comes a moral victory. For the first time tonight, we will actually see the special teams and the punting unit come on. It's actually a starting quarterback, Jarrett Stewart, which will be doing the kicking. Some miscommunication on who's supposed to return it. So and we'll see and, how that goes. and I, mean, I, think, I think North Eugene's in shock. I mean, they've obviously they've been picking it out of the end zone all night. So North Eugene will have Jockey Murphy back deep and gets the sidewinder kick, and he gets lucky as he misses the first one. Now a few tacklers miss him, and Murphy able to go forward, still going, and won't let his knees hit the ground. Like to see the competitiveness now coming out of this Highlander team. Yeah, great effort. But uh, after he got passed up. Jakai, thank you. Hey, everybody out there, I really appreciate that. It's really important for all these kids out there tonight. Jakai Murphy, I'm gonna, I've been saying his name wrong all night. Jakai, my apologies. Nice run, Jakai. That's an important safety tip in the future for us, Mike. We're going to be doing games in the future. If we have any question about their names, we make sure that we get the pronunciation. So, Jakai, great run back. And I would say next time, if I have more than uh, hours notice about doing a game, <laughs> we could do some of that. I uh, know. It's good to get you up here and in the booth. Hey, I'm getting comfortable. <laughs> Pretty soon, you won't be talking at all anymore because I won't let you st that's what, let that, you have a trust word. Trust me, that's what Ken and everybody <laughs> down there in that truck wants. We'll stick with it. You know, getting the, and looking forward to, I don't want to take anything away from the game tonight, but Michael, myself, and the entire crew will be uh, not too far from here on September the 23rd at 1 p.m. And if you're wondering what that is, we call that a tease in the business. And the tease is, is that Western Oregon University will open up their season on September 23rd. Everybody from Valley TV, including myself, will be there. I believe it's our fourth season together. Only getting better, but still something be determined here tonight. Can North Eugene find a way into the end zone? before the clock strikes zero. Six minutes now remaining in the fourth quarter. So run up the middle, uh, conservative play, but uh, the defensive line there to make a stop for no gain. Drew Williams getting some more experience as the quarterback of this North Eugene team. Let's see if he can get the ball downfield. He's looking for a man. I like the fact that he pulled the trigger quickly. Just needed some air underneath that ball and maybe just a little bit more speed on the outside would have helped. Yeah, I mean, a little bit, little bit less air on that ball and we could give the receiver a chance to catch it. But uh, again, just a little miscommunication there. Third down and nine. <laughs> just short of midfield would gain a first down for this North Eugene team. Little play action, finds a man out in the flat, and a good pickup and block, and there might be a first down in that play. That was a really well-designed play from North Eugene to pick up the first down yardage. Yeah, a little play action, and uh, get, you, get you a first down. Went the wrong way on the uh, handoff, <laughs> but uh, still great protection. You see this block downfield by the receiver that, uh, that just gives him that extra little bit of time to uh, run to the first down. And uh, great play by everybody. And then the Dallas defense all together, pushing him out of bounds. Nose of the football just short of midfield. Drew Williams and the Highlanders trying to end this game on a positive note. A little run to the outside uh, for a four yard gain. Tavion Woolett has seen some time in the backfield tonight but he is met by two defenders of the Dragons. They drag him to the ground, not before the tailback picks up three yards. Now in Dallas 
territory looking for something bigger. Ball was intended for this big play. Number 22, Cody Pruitt, but Pruitt not eight feet tall. Thought he might have been held on the play. Just kind of honed in on him. Oh, the corner and the safety were there. It was going to be tough to make that play. He tried to put it somewhere where only his receiver could catch it. And, uh, again, it was just a little bit too high for him at that point. Coaching staff for the Dallas Dragons pretty frenetic on the sideline right now. They are really, really going after trying to make sure that they don't put any points on this board. Here comes Pruitt in motion. Pruitt cuts it up. And a solid play coming from the Dragon defensive player, number 56, Bryce Miller. I mean, he would not let go of Pruitt. And uh, that's what the coaches are yelling for. They want to keep the shutout most likely, and uh, well, not even most likely for sure. But uh, talking to the younger players out there, making sure they're doing the right assignments as the game goes along, because a lot of them haven't had this as much experience playing varsity necessarily. No gain on the play, it's fourth and seven. Williams calls out the play for his offense. And they try that little wrinkle again and they're getting good blocking. And for a second straight time, great yards picked up by number 34. He's not on our card tonight either, but both times they've needed big plays. Was it? Uh, Brandon Brown getting news from. Brandon Brown makes somebody miss there, and he's about a yard and a half short, but he was a great effort for him to try to get that first down. But again, Dallas, even with the screen and the blocking downfield, had enough players running down to make that tackle to uh, get the turnover on downs. Brandon Brown, my hat's off to you on that last offensive series. Understood you'll turn the ball over on downs, but well played, young man. You know, I, after the kerfuffle earlier, it's nice to see all the kids getting back to uh, just playing the game. Uh, no, no late stuff afterwards, and everybody's playing uh, with a lot of class at this point. Have you ever used that word in a Scrabble game? No, I don't think I've ever used it ever. Is it a real word? I think I've heard somebody say it. I just heard, uh, the, people just, say it on television, then it's you, a word. You just heard yourself say it. Yep. Like, you believe everything you see on television? Kerfuffle? <laughs> Me, I mean, I, I, I mean, I'm trying to think. Is that maybe the second time? Well, I, I've, well, not that. Well, I said it the second time, so the, maybe that's the third or fourth time I've ever heard that word. Under a minute now with the running clock. <coughs> Dallas about ready to do one of the most fun things that there is to do in all of the game of football. Maybe after this play, but actually they'll do it here. Victory formation. Victory for formation. Take that knee. Mike, you stay up here in the booth. You give him a little bit of breakdown. I guess I'm headed downstairs to go talk to somebody. And as the game's coming to an end here with the last kneel down, there's not enough time for them to let it run out before. Oh, I guess there was. And that's the end of the game with the final score. The Dragons 54, you South Eugene, excuse me, North Eugene, zero. Players saying good game to each other. And again, it's a good game. Hopefully the North Eugene players that were hurt weren't hurt too bad. on one of the first cool nights of this late summer, early fall season. Well, welcome everyone. Join us for a post game uh, here uh, in Dallas, Oregon, as the Dallas Dragons open up their season at home tonight, convincing 54-0 victory. Coach, we were coming off the field alongside here with Coach uh, Tracy Jackson of the Dallas Dragons. You said, hey, when you were looking at this, you know, when you saw the uniforms come in for the opposing team, you, you, I don't think you expected this. No, they, they look thick, and, and uh, but we're thick too, and we play <laughs> thick, and 
and I think I think we're a good team. We knew we were a good team, but we tried to downplay this in the newspaper way back at the beginning of the season because, you know, we, we you have to prove yourself every year, and, and but I think our guys are, are up to that challenge. Got a couple of big studs here sitting next to me. I'd like you to introduce Yes, them they are. Me. Yes, they are. Is Jared Stewart our quarterback? Jared, say hi to everybody. Hello. Hey. And our middle linebacker and tight end, Tree Bearheart. Hello. Hey, Treve, Jerry, I want to say something tonight. I mean, I was watching you guys. I mean, great communication. How long have you all been playing with each other? And, 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 and really, this is, I think, a real important question tonight. I mean, I know you were playing a team that you expected to win, but what made things so easy and click tonight for you? Uh, I know that I played with Treve when I was in the third and fourth grade, <laughs> and that was the first time we've ever played together. And then we kind of split up, and he played with his brother and the older teams. And then when we got into middle school, he came back, and it's been a joy playing with him ever since. I'm going to ask you one more question before I let you go here in a second. When you got the touchdown to him tonight, what was the play call and what did you see from your vantage point? Because from up there in the booth, it looked like he was pretty wide open. Uh, we call it green 10 or green fly 10 trap pass. Coach, is it okay for him to say that? Uh, yes, it's fine. <laughs> yeah, and, our, fine. And, and our first play, or our first pass play, and our read is the corner. And I know that he's a phenomenal athlete, so if I throw it up to him, he's going to go get it. And after he catches it, he's going to be able to do what he wants with it. A Treve question for you, kind of a little bit different. You know, what's it like being a part of this program? And I mean, it seems like tonight, based on what I saw on the sideline, a lot of camaraderie. You guys are very together. Watch yourself, Treve. Yeah, I love it. It's just it's the only team I'd want to play with in the state. There's no better team in the state. Even though, like, I'm with all my brothers here. I mean, I love it no matter what. No matter who's here. No matter what team, like, what players are out here on the sidelines. I love it. Coach Johnson, just some final thoughts from you tonight. I know that uh, the team that you played uh, was a little bit, maybe you say undermanned in the fact they weren't able to practice because of some of the terrible things that are happening with neither the fire. Were, neither were we. We, neither, we, weren't, we weren't able to practice either yesterday. Yeah. We got on the grass for the first time in, in a number of days. And then talk to me this last thing. I mean, I don't want to bring it up, but I mean, it was an important part of the game, and I know it's something you always have to teach. I mean, when temper started to flare, what did you say to your team to you know, calm them down? Well, well we, we addressed individuals and reminded them that they're a, a much better level of character than they were shown at that moment, and they needed to get that turned around quickly because it's true. I mean, our kids and those kids and their kids, too, are, are better than that, too. Yeah. But the fact is that they, this is a passionate game, and sometimes when you're getting your tail kicked, your passion goes in the, in, in the wrong direction. And the thing about it is we need to help bring that back to, to reality, to get it back straight again. And so that's really what I want us to do is to, uh, we want to play with a high hand at all times. Well, the scoreboard says it all, 54 to nothing for everybody on the field at KWVT, Matt Palumbo, Mike Brown, Coach Tracy Jackson, quarterback Jared Stewart, and Treve, thank you for joining us tonight. We'll be back for much more. Have a great night, everybody. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thanks. This is Northwest Sports.